All praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Akakwadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of the Great Millstone, Shalom, salutations to the hopeful elect that's fighting a good fight of faith and truth and sincerity and wholeheartedly. Shalom to the Akwath, which is the women believers. Shalom to you. And, you know, we supposed to stand out. So be holy, be separate. And this is not the time to be kicking it, you know, with your homeboys in the world. This ain't the time to be, you know, reverting back, being lackadaisical. This is the time. Matter of fact, before I even read this, that's a spirit. <sighs> So it said, but the path of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more until the perfect day. So we actually supposed to shine. And by shining is by being separate, being holy. You know, um, people in the world is supposed to look at you as different. You know. I'm going to look up this word. Let me see. What was it? Shining. With that shineth. And that's uh a war. I mean to be to be become light, shine, to become light, to be illuminated, you know? And this light, as the scripture says, um, oh at the bottom, look at that. A uh, letter V to make shine of the face. In Ecclesiastes um eight and one, it said wisdom make of a man's face to shine. So you know, um, matter of fact, let me look up this word path. And it's Araka, Araka, or Arak. I want to say Arak. And it's way path, path road, the path, way, passing of life, figuratively, way of living. That's that's the one right there. Travel or wayfarer. So the way of living and the way that you're going to live is the way that the Lord, you know, command of you, you know, keep his commandments, you know, the law, you know, you follow that to the best of your ability. So. Yeah, so it's a rock. Yeah. So. um, So going back to Leviticus. Leviticus 20 and 7, it says, sanctify yourself, therefore be holy, for I am Yahweh, your power, and you should keep my statutes and do them. I am Yahweh, which sanctify you. So we all know that we ain't saved by the law, but we supposed to be keeping it to the best of our ability. So that is the point of, you know, being different, man. Like I always say this, like um, if you are in a crowd you should stand out, all right. Especially if, um, you know, say I'm just, I'm just being being hypothetical right now. Like, say you in a crowd somewhere. Like, say you in a park, and people, I don't know, you getting interviewed. You know, you already know how Jake be acting when they get interviewed. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, cause like you know, yeah. So I, what I did see, like you know how you know how Jake is, right? So by a person talking to you, they should be able to be like, hmm, something different about him. The way that he approached things, the way that he talked, the way that he walked. All right. That's actually in the um, matter of fact, let me get it. It says a man may be known by his look. And one that have understanding about his by his countenance when you meet as him. See, so that's you standing out. People is supposed to not, you know, group you into a box like, oh, that's just like another Jake. You know what I'm saying? I ain't going to say the N word. I'm trying to not say the N word. But anyways, um, that's just like another Jake, you know. Um, and when I say the N word, I'm talking about so-called blacks, Latinos and Native Americans. All right. But um, but yeah, so people supposed to, you know. Something different about him, you know, uh, verse 30, a man's attire and excessive laughter and gait. Gait is um, the way that you walk. 
show what he is. So, yeah, like you already know, most of Jake's is not serious. They play around, you know, they um they can't even put a sentence together for the most part, you know, and the way that they dress sagging, you know, what I'm saying tattoos, you know, uh, you know, you, you know, hoodie up. Nothing wrong with a hoodie, though. You know what I'm saying? But you know what I'm talking about. But the point that I'm making is that um, you, you're supposed to stand out. So um, so it said, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers for what fellowship have with righteousness with the wait, Salakia. Be you not unequally yoked together with unbelievers for what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness and what communion have light with darkness. So, you know, um, at the end of the day, you might have friends in the world still. You might even still be cool with them to a certain extent. But this ain't the time to be around them. We are in dangerous times. All right. Matter of fact. Let me prove it through the scriptures. This is why um, Amos said this. Uh, 13. So it says um, Amos 5 and 13. It said, therefore, the prudent shall keep silence in that time for it is an evil time. So this ain't the time, you know, I'm pretty sure because we all have done it. You probably told your buddy, you know, uh, family and friends about the truth. And they did. They rejected it. They said you was in a cult or yeah that sound cool and all but i'm i'm cool on that i'm good or if you have friends and family that are christians you know they they still christians you know it's in christianity so you know this ain't the time to be trying to be like come on man time is ticking you better get right you know what i'm saying that's why the scripture said not uh cast not your pearls before swine all right because what they're going to do is rent it unto you and trample it. So they're going to use it against you. See, this is a time where that if you ain't on your P's and Q's, you are liable <laughs> to get caught up, man. So the point of this video that I'm making is that um, this ain't the time to be caught lacking, you know, use a worldly term, you know. So this ain't the time to be hanging out with your worldly friends a lot. It's okay to say, okay, like I said, I got um I got two close friends in the world where I don't really speak to them that much, but I speak to them on the phone here and there. You know what I'm saying? And and I'm not talking to them about the truth. I tell you that I've done that before to the point that, you know, I almost fell out with both of them. But hey, the Lord got it too that we still cordial. So I speak to them maybe like once every six months, once a year, whatever. But we still cool. Check up on each other and stuff like that. But to be hanging out and, hey, bro, man, you trying to you trying to kick him about to come to your house. You know what I'm saying? You want, like, nah, this ain't the time. And even though this scripture is actually talking about, you know, people with having diff different doctrines, different beliefs and things like that. You know, people that's actually you know, spiritual and teaching and things like that. Cause you know, back in the day, not even can't even say back in the day, you know, but not that long ago, they used to have unity camps and everybody got a different doctrine. It don't make no damn sense, but whatever. So, uh, 15, it said, what, uh, what concord have Hamashiach with Belial, which is just another word for Satan. All right. Or what, part have he that believeth within the infidel which is an unbeliever so you know you ain't supposed to be always in the presence of these people who are not like you they don't understand you and here's the thing matter of fact let me get it it's one of my favorite scriptures that i always listen this scripture right here was one of the first scriptures that really settled in my mind First Corinthians 15, 33, be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. All right. So this is twofold. Literally, if you get around people who are contrary to your beliefs, you're going to start speaking like them. But then the other side, too, is that you're going to actually start doing the things that they do. So that's why the scripture started off with be not deceived. 
All right. Be not deceived because see, it will deceive you because you think that, oh, I know I won't do this. I know I won't do that. I know. Shit, I believe. You know what I'm saying? I know I got Yahweh Bashim Abishai, so I could be in any predicament. Ain't nothing going to happen to me, dude. That's why Ephesians 6 and 12 said that our fight is not against flesh and blood. All right? Principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places. Satan is looking for a reason to jump on you and make you do something that you got no business doing. Don't put yourself in a position to lose. So, 16. In what agreement have the temple of the most high because you know the, the lord said that we are the temple of the most high he dwelleth in us so what agreement have the temple of the most high with idols for you are the temple of the living power as the most high have said i would dwell in them and walk in them and i will be their power and they should be my people so this is how if the lord is dwelling in you then you definitely should stand out you definitely should not be like people should not be able to look at you and be like oh, i ain't nothing different about him Number one, just so countenance is how you look and how you act. It ain't just how you look. But let's just look with the uh, let's just talk about the looking perspective. So if you are a man of the Lord, you're not going to be groomed like these men in the world is. If you are a man in the truth. You're not going to be groomed like the men in the world. So you ain't going to have a fresh ass lineup and. You know, that uh crispy, crispy uh cut, you know what I'm saying? So, and you're going to have a beard on your face if you're able to grow one. It's going to be probably a little scruffy, you know what I'm saying? Going back to not being lined up and stuff. And then, you know, you, you just, if you're working, you just go to work, you know, live a quiet life. So, you ain't really dressing up all the time. You just put on some regular damn clothes as long as it match, all right? You know, I'm just putting it out there, you know, I... I got my uh my, my best friend in the world. That man do not match, man. He he have on some green shoes, a red sweater, and some gray pants. <laughs> so so I'm just saying. So yeah, you know. But yeah, for the most part, you know, you you, you ain't gonna look like everybody else, man. You supposed to stand out. Your conversation is different. All right. So it says wherefore. Come out from among them. See, you got to be separate. That's why I'm going to title this video. If I remember, be separate, be holy. You got to you got to be able to stand out. Matter of fact, in the um, in second Ezra 16, when it goes into, you know, the. Um, the, 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 the people. Spoiling, destroying those that fear the Lord. Right. But up, up above that it talks about then you should know who is my chosen or is it right under that? But anyways, it's the point that I'm making is that then you should know who is my chosen man. So the men of the Lord is going to stand out in these days. So um, it said, wherefore, come out from among them, be you separate, save the Lord and touch not the unclean thing. And I will receive you. So that means not eating things that's unlawful, not doing things that's unlawful. As uh, the scripture said, touch not, taste not. All right. So like. Let's take Christmas that just passed. I don't deal with Christmas at all. Thanksgiving is a different story. You know, I might go to a family member house and give me some turkey, some greens. You know what I'm saying? That's lawful as long as there ain't no pork in it. Matter of fact, I actually, my, um, my family, for the most part, my woman's family, put it that way. They respect that I don't eat pork. So they actually make a whole separate greens you know, um, pot for me, my woman don't eat pork either, but, but the point is, is that, so like, I don't really partake in the festivities. We all know what Thanksgiving is about. That's the slaughtering of our brothers. So if I come over to get a plate or my woman bring a plate home to me, I pray over that food in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right. So if you go over to a family's house and they pray over that food in Jesus, and then you say, well, I don't believe in Jesus. And then you just eat it. You still eating an unclean thing, even if it's lawful, because you didn't pray over that food in the name of Yahweh Bashem El Bashai. All right. If you know that that food is prayed over in an idol, then you don't eat it. All right. I'm just making examples right now. So, um, so the way that you separate from among them, you know, is by because number one, what's going to happen naturally 
y'all naturally going to separate. Talk about friends, family, whoever you're close to that's not um, in the same mind as you. Because the way that you walk, as the scripture saying, um, Amos 3 and 3, can um, two walk together unless they be in agreed, you know? So, um... I think that's Philippians. Yeah, I think it is. I think it is. So it said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is it? Uh, Maybe it's Colossians. Yeah. As ye, so it said, as you have therefore received Hamashiach, Yahweh, the Lord, so walk ye in him. So just by that, you're going to be different. You know, you're going to be contrary to the world. You're going to stand out. Now, the world is going to hate you, as it says in John 15. If the world loved you, I mean, if you were of the world, the world would love you. But since I, since the world hates you, and I, I'm paraphrasing, it's John 15 and 18. All right. So whoever watches, you can read it yourself. But it talks about how he chose you out of the world. And if the world... If you was of the world, the world will love you. But since he have chose you out of the world, the world hate you. All right. Paraphrasing. Um. So, yeah. So it said, as you have therefore received Hamashiach, Yahweh, the Lord. So walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and feign deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world and not after Hamashiach. And that is a big stumbling block to people because Christmas is a rudiment of the world. Thanksgiving is a rudiment of the world. See, uh, rudiments is the, uh, the fundamentals of things. So basically like the beginning and but to make it more easier to understand is traditions of men, like how Yahweh Shah had to tell the Pharisees, Sadducees and Pharisees about because they basically was trying to get on Yahweh Shah for eating without washing his hands. And that's where the Christians uh, misinterpret the scriptures talking about, see, you can eat anything because Yahweh Shah said it's not what goes in, but it's what comes out of the mouth. Right. Because what goes in comes out into the draught, which is the toilet, right? So pastors would be like, see, you can eat anything because it ain't about what goes in and what comes out. The whole chat, that whole uh, parable was talking about washing hands, all right? That's a tradition of men. If you eat something without washing your hands, it don't make you unclean. But guess what? If they put the rudiment or a tradition of man, you know, with a man that's in rulership, make it a decree, then yeah, now you following after the traditions of men and not Yahweh Shai. Just using that as an example. So, you know, that all them holiday, oh, Easter. You know what I'm saying? That's a rudiment. That's a that's a tradition of men. So the thing is, is that man, you're supposed to be separate. And this ain't the time to draw back. This is the time to continue to shine more and more to the perfect day. Just, uh, yeah, uh, Proverbs 4 and 18, the second scripture that I read. So, you know, hopefully when I make videos like this, you know, I always, you always do videos for yourself first, you know, and then Lord willing, whoever watch it, you know, you edify them because this is the thing, man. Satan tries to attack you any way that he can and definitely use people that's close to you. You know, he used Eve that was close to Adam. You know, he'll use your woman that's close to you, you know, and then if you have, you know, close friends and family that you had before the truth, you know, and you still cordial with them, you know, at the end of the day, uh, the Lord going to separate it anyway. Cause like I said, two different mentalities can't come together. Most of the time, your friends in the world, I'm talking about like, so if you still live around them, then it's, um, it's harder than a person that move away from them. So then you really don't have to keep contact like that. But if you actually still around your family and friends, like you still in the same city uh, or 
even like 10 minutes away or whatever, you know, you might still keep in contact with them. But this is a very limited contact. What I'm saying is that this ain't the time to, you know, be drawn back to being like, oh, I want to check on my homeboy and kick it with him. You know, you want to see, you want to call him and see how he doing. That's it. And the conversation should be talking about, you know, not the truth. As the scripture said, it's an evil time. You got to be prudent, man. So hopefully, you know, I did a little rambling, but hopefully it was edifying. So all praise to you. How about you? I was shy. Inshallah.